Hi, my name is Jade, and this is How to App on iOS, and I hope you're doing okay. Today, I'll be taking a look at the Hornet H76 compressor by Hornet, so let's oge! The Hornet H76 compressor is an emulation of the classic vintage 1176 peak limiter compressor created in 1967. It's been used in more recordings than James Hetfield has said, yeah, yeah. So yes, I hear you say, do we need another emulation of the 1176 out there? Well, why not? Because this one has a few tricks up its sleeve that will help you get some great settings much easier with some fantastic auto features. It is available on the App Store for free, giving you a short period of time to test it out with silence every now and again until you unlock the full version for $9.99. It works on all iOS devices and M Series Max. You can also grab the VST for desktop for about €22, Euros, so let's check out how it works. So here we are in AUM and I have a very simple drum loop set up here. Just going to hit play and have a listen to it. Okay, so the main thing I want you to pay attention to is, of course, the levels of what this is without any compression. So this is the H76 plugin. Of course, it's an AUV3, so we can load it in here. And this is the interface. Let's talk about it. So now you may have used one of these 1176s in the past. The original hardware, it, 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 this you know, mimics the original hardware. So we've got an input. We've got an output gain, uh, so input and output. We have our attack and release. We've got four ratios. So I say four, but you see five. So there's uh, four, 12, uh, eight, 12, and 20. And then you have this all button. So let me explain this. On the original piece of hardware, there were four buttons, four, eight, 12, and 20. But a lot of um, <laughs> engineers would press all of them at the same time to get this really uh, creative sound that would, you know, because a lot of people did this back in the day. You found with hardware devices, you would try to get creative, interesting sounds out of compressor or limiter or whatever piece of hardware it is. So what has been added here is an all button. Um for you to mess around with. Most people are going to stay on four. We'll probably show you 20 here just to show you a full compression in action. But of course, you know, 20 and all this kind of stuff can be used for, you know, creative stylings or all that kind of stuff. But most of the time you're going to end up using your four here. You've got a meter, of course. We've got our, um, uh, our gain reduction. We've got an input, output, off, and our markup gain. So uh, the original hardware has all these four buttons here, but it doesn't have the um, markup gain. So th th that, that's not available in the original hardware. Now down the bottom here, we have an input trim, output trim. You can actually link these together. So they can be linked together. We have a trim target that you can choose as well. We've got our target gain reduction. And you'll notice you'll see these auto gains here. So auto trim, auto gain reduction, auto attack and release. This uh, is what is different about this thing that will help you. If you're still struggling with compression, this can help you just nail something really easy without really knowing too much. You've also got a dry wet mix here. So this is really great for parallel compression. You can pull this down. So I'm just grabbing with my mouse here and pulling down. So if you want to have a parallel uh, dry wet mix there for uh, compression. You've got some oversampling here, which is nice. So up to eight times oversampling, a bypass button, the analog, because remember this is an analog compressor, you can actually turn that off. And you've got the hiss as well. So you can keep the original hiss in there of the original machines, because when they release these, the uh, first two versions, I think, were quite noisy until they revised the third version to really tame back some of that hiss. But, you know, people like that stuff. You know, that, that's where we're at. And we also have some presets. So when you hit load and tap on this empty box, you've got some presets. Now, of course, remember with compression, limiting, presets have been set uh, around certain things that were <laughs> listened to at the time. So they're not always going to work for you, but they're a great place to jump off. But if you pay attention here, you'll see kick drum auto, snare auto, drums room auto, drums bus auto, bass auto, vocals auto. So there are some auto selections in here and we'll show you how those work. So they're very handy to keep your eyes on.
let's close this out of here. Now, with any kind of compression, what you're going to want to do first, so this is, when you first load it, these are the settings. So we've got 24, 24, so that's evened itself out. Now, the one thing I just want to touch on is the attack and release. So with most compressors, when you turn up here, this is uh, making this a slower but with the 1178, it's in the reverse. So when you pull down, pull back, this is a slower attack and up higher is a faster attack. It's just the reverse for this particular uh, piece of hardware. So keep that in mind. So uh, that's your, your slow, re uh, slow release, slow attack. And we'll get into what that means. This isn't a full explanation of compression and all that kind of stuff. But if you were starting off from scratch, my advice is so to play the actual drums. So now you'll notice I'm going to use, uh, we've got the bypass here. So if I hit play, we're going to hear the drums without the compression. I'll just turn this down a bit. And now if we turn this on, you can see that lowers heaps, right? Because this hasn't even been set up at all. We've got no setup whatsoever. Originally, you want to come in here and you want to play with your input and your output gain. So the higher you turn up, the more compression there is. And it uses the ratios here. So we're at four ratio. So you can hear that's pump, that's crazy stuff there. So we can turn this up here. And whatever we turn up, so if we pull this, if we turn this up, we're going to want to pull the output down. So it works in opposite. So if we pull this back a little bit, we can put our output up. But what we want to do is we want to match the original volume. So let's just turn it off here. And look where our volumes are at the top here. We've got like a 4.8 4 to 1.6. And when we turn it on, we want to get it as close to that as possible, yeah? That's pretty good. Now I'm going to set a target down here for gain reduction at about uh, mm -hmm. minus five. Now this attack's pretty good. We can, you know, keep this around three for drums. I'm going to bring this release up. Now what you want to do with your release, all right, is you want this meter to actually be moving with the drums, right? To follow that beat. See, when we pull this all the way to a slow, it's just, it's like sludge, it's hardly moving. So around a 5.5, 5.6 all the way up to a six is gonna be good, I think. You can see that we've got movement there. Now with your metering here, this, we're, this is showing our gain reduction at the moment. So here's our input, out. Let's turn this off down here. Not too bad. All right, so what is the purpose of compression? Let's talk about it. So with, now we don't, if you look at the waveform here, when we close this out, I don't have a, a wider view. We'll see this in a logic project I'm going to open up. You've got peaks and you've got uh, parts that are uh, uh, smaller and larger. And you want to bring them down. You want to bring the peaks up uh, lower and you want to bring the uh, low bits up. So they're, they're more even. That's, that's what it's all about. So, you know, nothing's like jarring and popping out. That's what it's doing. You want to compress it evenly, keep it around the same volume. Not You don't want to add or too much volume to it. You want to keep it around the same as what your mix is, yeah? You just want it to, to be cleaner and pop. And... That's not too bad. But let's show you these auto functions. Now, I haven't even added any markup gain here. So let's try that. We'll hit play and see what our markup gain gives us when we click this. So it's actually reduced that a little bit. So the, the markup gain is not always, let's t t take it out of the mix and check the volume. That's pretty good. Now you've got this output trim here. I can come down here and maybe add an extra decibel. You 
can overwrite these settings, you know what I mean? Anyway, it's, it's good. Let's clear this. Let's clear this out. So we're going to double tap on all this stuff. Just double tap it all. We'll bring this down here back to zero. We'll bring this down to zero as well. Let's show you these auto settings. So I'm going to go over here to load. Actually, we'll just do it from scratch. So we're just going to turn on these auto trims. I will, I do like to set my gain reduction just at like around minus five or minus six. I mean, you know, it's, I like doing that. That's just me. So if I turn on auto trim and hit play and make sure we're all on. We will bypass then. So now you'll see, with all these three on, our auto trim has set the input trim to minus five. Our auto gain reduction is up here, messing about. And we've got our attack and release. So all you really need to do is leave this on for a, a, a you know, maybe a bar and a bit, and then just turn these off. And look at what we've got here. It's pretty similar to what I set myself. It's got the, it's turned on the markup gain. We were pretty close to these settings. Three, 5.9. Let's uh, bypass it. So we could probably add a bit more volume to it. Again, maybe a couple of dB over here. Bypass. So as you can see, very easy to dial stuff in if you don't know what the hell you're bloody doing. Not too bad, not too bad at all. All right, let's get out of here from, from this. Let's move into some single drum tracks and maybe a little bit of vocals. So I'm gonna close out of here, make that disappear. We'll open up Logic and I've got this split drum program. So a uh, little uh, setup here. Now this is a real drum kit. Let's hit play. Hopefully the sound's gonna work. Sometimes Logic decides not to work. There we go. So we've got a kick, snare, there's a ride here. We've got a couple of toms, an overhead, and an ambient mic. So very dry kit, real drum kit. Okay, let's jump in and solo these kicks. We'll come back to the start here. And uh, let's set a, a little target up the top here so we don't have to keep um, coming back to the start. This will just take a second to get that there. Boom, shugga, lugga, lugga. And we'll make that to the end. And uh, let's hit play. So here's our kicks. Now I've already added it in, horn it in here. It's not turned on. Here's what's really cool. So again, you already know the settings. Let's just get all this back to zero or everything's. The one thing I don't like about it here in Logic is there seems to be enough room here when I open it full to have both parts like we had in, um, see, in, in Logic here, I've got to switch between the extras. I'd really like to make this fit. If there was some way to do that, that's one little complaint I've got there. Um, so let's show you this because we want to dial in a kick sound, but I don't know what I'm doing. We'll just pretend I don't, yeah? So we're going to go over here and load this kick drum auto. And you'll notice it's loaded. And when I turn it on, I've got all three of these extras down here. So the auto trim, the auto gain reduction, the auto attack and release. And it's doing its best to, to work this out. So you can see it's given an input trim of minus 6.6, .6, a target gain reduction of minus 6, what I would have put anyway. And all we need to do is just let this do its thing for a while and just, just turn them off. Off you go. You can do them one by one or you can do them all at the same time. There's no, doesn't really make any difference. 
So it's added markup gain as well. Okay, let's turn it off. Now what I want to do is bring on my little volume over here and we'll see what's going on over here when we turn this off. So it's a little bit louder without it on. So we can probably give this a little bit of guzz. I don't know. Nice. And you can see what you've got going on here. You've got in, out, gain reduction. You can turn it off. Now you're going to hear that get loud. We'll talk about the off button shortly. But not too bad. Let's uh, come out of this and let's hear it back in the mix. Now, remember, these are completely dry, and you know you can add more compression on later on. Let's go over to the snare here, come back to the beginning. So we've, uh, that's not the snare. Yeah, that's the snare. Uh, let's hit play on our snare. And we'll turn this on. So you can hear straight away as soon as it goes on, lowers in sound. Let's do our auto, because we've got our auto snare in here. Now let it do its thing, let it play for a bit and get to grips of what's happening. You can see down here, it's added minus six, minus 0 0.8 over here. And we can turn these off. It's done a pretty good job of matching the volume. And you can tame to your liking, right? So you don't have to follow those. They're great settings to have. You can hear how much more present that is. Wicked. All right, what I want to show you, let's come back to that snare and we'll reset this. So we'll reset everything here, come back. Let's reset this to zero, this back to zero. And what I want to show you is the off button. So if we did an auto, let's try doing an auto first. So we'll come up here, we'll do uh, like auto snare. Let it do its thing. Okay, there's our snare. Now if we turn this off, you'll hear how that's got louder. So now the compression is off, but what it has... What it's maintained is with these vintage compressors, there's an amount of saturation in there as well too. That's why people love these things because there's a with any kind of you know, piece of analog hardware, there's always some form of saturation, some kind of characteristic. And when you hit this off button, you get that. And let me show you. We can pull this output down and we can really, let's find this snare. Come back here to the, the start. So 
So essentially what we're doing is we're just using the, uh, come over here to the extras page, this analog that we're using the analog sound. We're not com using any of the compression. We've got some of that hiss in there as well. And we're able to get some of that saturation if that's what the, the kind of sound you're after as well. I mean, it's naturally in the compressor, but this is what you can do too, because you might not want to use it uh, as a compressor. <laughs> got to be creative when making sounds. All right, so let's get out of here now. And I've got some vocals. Let's try it on vocals. I haven't really tried it on vocals, so this is going to be a first time. Is it going to happen? Now, I've got one of these demos here from uh, a song I so on some of the shows I've been doing recently, I've taken a demo I found of mine from 1995 and I've started to recreate the song. So here it is. This is one of them called Beautiful Girl. Let's play a bit of it. So not too bad. There's no effects on here. When I was recording, I was using Xbox down here. So there's nothing else on here. Let's just solo this vocal track out here. It's not perfect. This is really only a demo vocal. You're looking so natural. And you can see. Like the sun in my sky. It's fairly consistent. Fairly consistent. Picture of perfection. I'm using the Rode pod mic to do the, these vocals. But let's introduce the uh, H76 in here. Here we go. So uh, we'll turn it off for now. And uh, let's talk about first uh, what I just was mentioning before about just using the analog emulation. So let's come in here and uh, put this off and hit play. You're looking so natural. We'll turn it on. Like the sun in my sky. A picture of perfection, yeah. The blue in your eyes. Portraits of nature, yeah. So I've got a double vocal in there, right? But we hear what I'm saying, right? So you may do a really fantastic vocal take that doesn't need too much compression at all. Or you may have another compressor that you're running. You might just want to run this as the analog just to get a bit of specific grit in there. So that's why I just did that, just to remind you again. But let's start off by using this auto thing here. So we'll just make sure this track's solo. We'll go back to the start of this. And um, again, we'll put in our little uh, thingy up the top. Our thingy, our loop. <laughs> Technical terms here on the channel, folks. Um, and we've got this vocals auto. So we can load this. And what's happened is it's already set to auto. And it's given us a target gain reduction of 10, a plus three VU for trim target. And let's just play it and see what it does, if it how it goes. You're looking so natural. Like the sun in my sky, a picture of perfection, yeah, the blue in your eyes. So it's given eyes. us a pretty slow attack, 5.5 release. Nature, yeah. seasons Let's check it out by. in volume. 
emotional changes. Pretty spot on volume wise. To Christ. You're looking so natural, like the sun in my sky. Picture of perfection, yeah. The blue in your eyes. Portraits of danger, yeah. Seasons go by. Emotional changes. Laughter. So hopefully you can hear that. It's brought up those small, those lower bits and made them. Much a much nicer level, but pretty damn good for just you know hitting that auto and, and giving it a go again. You can go for your life and change it if you don't like it. You're looking so natural, like the sun. Let's work on this second one and add a hornet in here. We're going to go down to load. I just think this is great. Portraits of nature, yeah. So you can see it finding the volume. So as I said, give it a bit of time to run through. It's kind of sticking there, it looks like. Let's check the volume by bypassing. Wait for it to come loop around. You're looking so natural, like the sun. Not too in bad. Sky. Picture of perfection. Yeah. Let's add a twenty. The blue. Now you can hear that. In your eyes. Portraits of nature. Yeah. And all, you can really Seasons hear that working hard. Go by. Emotional changes. So why am I using a four? Well, you know, I do want some, I want to keep the velocities in there. I want to keep the dynamics in there. If I hit something like a 20, now, using a 20 is not necessarily a bad thing. I In my past, I've done some CDs with pop bands and some rock bands and my voice is actually really good for piling on the compression because I have a very unique kind of voice. You're looking so natural Like the sun in my sky Picture of perfection, yeah And I might want to stylistically, because I've, I've put a 20 ratio on the, the second track here, I want to keep that to just, you know, everything's stylistic, you know, it's up to your ears. Let's bring it down. Let's keep it at, sitting at around a four. You're looking so natural Like the sun in my sky Picture of perfection Not too bad. Hey, I'm very, very impressed by this thing. It's, uh, what, 10 bucks, And, um, you know, 
Really easy to use for those of you who are absolutely shit scared of compression. Anyway, let's get out of here for today. So that is the incredibly easy to use Hornet H76 compressor from Hornet. It's free to download, to try out with a $9.99 price tag to fully unlock it. Works on all iOS devices and M-Series Macs, and it's available as a desktop VST. Are you enjoying the content here on the channel? Please let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, do me a solid, smash the like. Hit the subscribe and ring the bell to keep up with all of the latest demos and live streams. You can also become a Patreon or a channel member as it does help out the channel. Okay, time to hit the road. Remember, do the things that make you happy, mistakes make you better, and we'll all rise together. Stay awake and uh, let's hoge. <laughs>